Okay, so speaking of sketchy things, this picture. So we're gonna talk about the Lamo cortical relay system and how you can kind of draw it to make it a lot simpler. Um, it's a very important system that's a little hard to understand at first, but it's very important in when we sense stuff, when we don't, um, how you can be alert, how you can't. So basically, the big players here are the thalamic um, reticular nuclei, or RTN, when um, abbreviated. And they're very important. Obviously, you would sometimes think that you want to experience every sensation, but there's a lot of reasons you wouldn't want to. Of course, if you're trying to sleep, you want to experience sensations. If, say, you're fighting on a battlefield and you're shot in the leg, but you need to keep fighting, you don't want to experience pain at that point. Um, so a lot of this plays into that kind of role. So. What would happen is if there's no um, thalamic reticular nucleus acting at this time, you would experience a sensation. So let's say you feel pain and temp in your foot. Pain and temp in your foot is gonna travel until it hits my thalamic relay nuclei. So in this case, it would be VPL. But the thalamic relay nuclei are anything like VPL, VPN, VAVL thal, MGN, LGN, etc., etc. All those are thalamic relay nuclei. They're taking sensation from one area and sending it to somewhere in the cortex. So if our RTN is not activated, my thalamic relay nuclei then, so this is a positive signal. Now this will send a signal that will bypass my RTNs. It's going to bypass cortical areas six and five. Remember there are six different cortical areas all based on histology, and it's gonna to go to cortical area four. At this point, cortical area four is gonna receive it and then be able to transfer it to the rest of the cortex, wherever that information needs to go, usually the um, primary somatosensory cortex. So, if for some reason you want to turn it off, again, say it's on a battlefield and you need to turn this pain off, if you wanna consciously do it, cortical area six is gonna think I need to not experience that and it's going to use glutamate to turn on my thalamic, thalamic reticular nuclei. At this point, the RTN are going to release GABA, and they're going to inhibit my thalamic relay nuclei. So now the sensation that's trying to get in is basically blocked. My thalamus will receive the sensation, but I won't be able to cortically perceive it. I won't actually be aware of it. Of course, you don't always want to do this, or you would never be aware, you would never be alert. This is where your reticular formation comes into play. So reticular formation is going to release a whole slew of things. So it's going to release serotonin, norepi, histamine, dopamine, etc. Remember these are coming from like periaqueductal gray, um, locus ceruleus, median raphe nucleus, all those places. And all these are going to inhibit my thalamic reticular nucleus. So this is if I want to be aware, I want to be aroused. I'm going to inhibit my thalamic reticular nucleus and thus disinhibit my thalamic relay nuclei so that sensation can now travel through to my cortex. Uh, this is why damage to the reticular formation is actually one of the, or is a cause of coma. Without this, you're unable to become aroused, unable to become awake, and you're in a comatose state. So one more player in the system is a hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, of course, has to do a lot with your sleep-wake cycles, um, general um, sympathetics, parasympathetics, and so the hypothalamus can actually turn your reticular formation off. And by turning off the reticular formation, it disinhibits my thalamic reticular nuclei, thus allowing them to hit inhibit, so they now are able to inhibit my thalamic reticular nuclei, and thus block sensation. So if my hypothalamus says it's time to sleep because it's circadian rhythm or whatever, it's going to turn off my reticular formation, disinhibiting my RTNs, and thus inhibiting my thalamic relays. So, just a quick overview. Again, if I want to generally experience sensation, it's going to come, it's going to hit one of my thalamic relay nuclei, VPM, VPL, etc. That's going to travel past all these systems so it reaches cortical area 4 and then spread to the rest of my cortex. If I want to cognitively turn that off, cortical area 6 is going to release glutamate, that glutamate is going to turn on the RTNs, and then the RTNs are going to release GABA to turn off my thalamic reticular nuclei, preventing the um, cognitive awareness of sensation. My reticular formation can reverse that by releasing a slew of neurotransmitters. By inhibiting the RTN, it disinhibits the thalamic relay nuclei, allowing for sensation. And then that can be further 
inhibited by the hypothalamus, um, for example, in the it, in the sleep-wake cycle, can inhibit the reticular formation, disinhibiting the thalamic reticular nuclei, and thus allowing for the inhibition of the thalamic relay nuclei. And that is the thalamocortical relay system.